Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about delegating. Does the thought of handing over your work to someone else make your palm sweaty? Would you like to know what are good choices to delegate? Are you skilled at how to effectively delegate items once you've hand them over? Let's wrap up our month focusing on back to school. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life, get organized, and become more mindful. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and I destroy the box and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. I'm really challenged at delegating and have learned to get better. I laughed. I, for the first time, took our bedspread to the cleaners because we have a bedspread and gets really hot in the South. So we just have our sheet and a blanket in case it's a cool night. What I do in the past, stuff it into the washer, and then I'd have this huge comforter and let it air dry, and it was this whole process. And I thought, this year, I'm going to do it differently. Found a coupon and said, you know what? I'm going to pay to have this bedspread dry clean. It was awesome. It came back in a little bag so I can keep it away in the dress in the closet. It's not going to get any dust on it. It was awesome. And I think about all the time that it saved me and one less thing to do. The other thing I found was at Trader Joe's, they have cauliflower crust. I'm not doing sugar anymore. And I thought, oh my gosh, if you've ever made cauliflower crust or you've made cauliflower rice, you have to steam, you have to cut, chop, get all the water out. And I'm really bad at that. And so a lot of times when I'd make cauliflower crust for pizza would fall apart. I got over my fear of, oh my gosh, I'm not being a good wife. He's not going to have homemade cauliflower. Saved me time, allowed me to make the rest of the meal homemade. So for me, this was delegating on a much smaller scale, but it was a great baby step to take those little steps to get me started delegating. Also in Rally, there has been a new service that has started. And so I tried it. And so you have people that you can say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And I found this awesome man to do yard work. Tony's extremely stressed at work. I love mowing, but I hate edging. And so I found this guy to come and do the edging. We needed some trees trimmed. And that allowed Tony not to stress out. He just redid the floors in our TV room. We're about to finish painting the bathroom. He could focus on stuff that he loves to do and that really is much more important to us. Now, of course, I've delegated some things quite easily, such as my website. I have no clue how to redesign a website. So that was completely worth it. I'm working on taking more and more of those steps to delegate so that I can have more time and peace of mind. What's preventing you from delegating? For many, it's about control. And control really is about fear. I know for me, it's about control because I still struggle with control. Side note, there are many layers to all of our stuff. Don't get discouraged. The more personal development work I do, I'm amazed and sometimes, ugh, yet another layer. However, the more you clear your stuff, the better life gets. For me, I chose to control stuff because I was, am a little bit still, afraid I was going to be hurt again. If you are like me and like control, what is it you are afraid of? Being judged? Criticized? Rejected? Another concern is, we worry someone else won't do it as well. If this is you, is it because you lack trust? Why wouldn't you trust others to do a task? Were you taught to not trust others when you were younger? I know I have a fear of being taken advantage of because that has happened to me in the past. I am grateful for my husband because I will never deal with a car mechanic again. 
to ease your concerns, ask for referrals, get references, start off with a small job. If they do a good first job, you can enable them with something that's more important. The recent man I hired for yard work was a great example. I had him clean the gutters out and I saw how that went. He showed up on time, had all his equipment, was prepared. He actually told me, you only need to get this done once a year. I made sure that I reviewed him so others know that he was a good person to hire. Some people really like the sense of power that con control gives them. In my experience that a need to control comes from feeling powerless in other areas of our lives and as a way to compensate. If this is you, what area in your life do you feel powerless? What could you do to empower yourself in that area? If you were hurt as a child and determined to gain power so you would never be vulnerable again, how could you heal that wound? I read an interesting article where it said power made people happy because they could act as they pleased and allowed them to be authentic. If this is sounding like you, how else could you be authentic? Maybe it is finding a new group of friends if your current crew are critical when you are the real you. I truly believe we all have a tribe and that we can find each other. The same article noted that seeking power did not make people happy. So the process didn't make you happy, but the goal did. For some people, it allows them to criticize others if they can control everything. They criticize others before others can get a chance to criticize them. Control allows people to feel better about themselves. What healthy ways could you practice to feel better about yourself? Do you see yourself in any of the scenarios I just talked about? Are you tired of being stressed out every time school begins? Would you or your child benefit from being more organized? Ready to be on top of it all and achieve your goals? Our successful school year, get organized, clear clutter, and gain peace of mind, Facebook Mastermind Community can support you. Begin September 6th. More information at reawakenyourbrilliance.com under Life Organization Masterminds. Now that you have a little more insight as to what may be stopping you from delegating, let's think about what you should delegate. What to delegate? Not the most crucial stuff. I would never delegate any of my writing or podcasting. I have hired editors, but never anyone to write my stuff. That is me, and I choose to have my voice expressed. So not the most important stuff. If you have the funds, can you hire someone to do what you dislike? I've talked about yard work. Can't stand it. Now have delegated that. Perhaps you could check out something like a babysitting co-op or get a sitter to free up your time. Consider trading or bartering and support one another. Think outside the box. How about an intern? I have been dying to get an intern for my business. It would be a really wonderful benefit. So if you know of anyone looking to do an intern, have them give me a call. Remember, you don't have to start really large. What one small thing could you delegate? Like I delegated having someone cleaning the comforter or getting cauliflower rice. Broaden your definition. Why cauliflower crust isn't quite delegating, it freed up time for me to focus on more important things like writing in the podcast. How to be a good delegator. Ask questions depending on what you need to delegate. What are their skills? Are they motivated? Do they have resources? Someone may have the skills, but is too busy or unmotivated to take on the task. If you're having someone do more intimate work with you or your business, consider making sure you're on the same page. 
communicate effectively. I am a huge fan of having everything in writing and follow up for clarification. Encourage the person to ask questions. Maintain accountability. What system will you put in place? Are you going to follow up in person, via email? What happens if the job's not done to your satisfaction? Allow the person to participate. I'm looking for an intern for social media. I would love their feedback and suggestions. I'm pretty good at it, but it doesn't mean I know everything by a long shot. I would welcome new thoughts and ideas. In my class for school success, I talk about brainstorming as a valuable tool. I welcome others' perspectives. Provide resources and anything that the person might need. Our cat sitter has a list, an emergency contact, and we are set up at the vet for her if something happens. She doesn't have to go out of pocket. She can take the cats in. The vet knows that we'll pay for it and to get a hold of us and to get the cats treated. I couldn't go on vacation without my cat sitter. Give credit and understand mistakes. I accidentally did something for a writing client. She'd been a client for about five years. It was really super small. However, I immediately told her what it was. She wasn't worried and we figured out a way to correct it. When I wrote my course, I thanked the editor and said it was a better product because of her editing skills. How can you give credit and understand when someone makes a mistake? Take actions from today's podcast. If you are hesitant to delegate tasks, figure out why. What small thing could you delegate to someone right now, today, or tomorrow? What do you need to keep in mind to be a successful delegator? If you are already comfortable with delegating, how could you make the process even better, easier, or more efficient? Next month, we'll be talking about hodgepodge. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire. Thank <laughs> you.